It is life's very core. It's tears and joy and sunshine. It's work but never fame. It's babies, bills and baking. But it's heaven just the same. to groovefm.co.nz thanks for joining us again at this time of the year, it's part of the New Zealand Festival, so we're going to be interviewing a number of people to give you a flavour for what's on, uh, and also doing a number of reviews as well, so look out for those. The festival runs from the 26th of February to the 20th of March, and the first one we're going to talk about is ACB with the Honora Lee, which I'll also be reviewing after I go and have a look at it in the next couple of days. It's a uh, by Kate de Goldie, and it's adapted and directed by Jane Woodell. It's a story of intergenerational generational love and acceptance and it runs from the 27th to the 26th of March at Circa Theatre. Now I'll give you a little bit about the plot. It explores the relationship between a young girl Perry and her eccentric gran who's losing her memory and lives in the Santa Lucia rest home. As Gran loses her words, Perry furiously gathers them together turning them into an illustrated and disorderly alphabet book and it becomes a gift of love to her grandmother. Honora Lee, that's the main character. The Kate de Gold is one of New Zealand's most loved authors, and it's also a short fiction writer. She writes novels and uh, also stuff for adults as well. Now, I had a chat to two of the actresses, Amy Tullerton and Michelle Amos, and they're going to tell me all about their contribution to the project and their characters. That's right. Yeah, this week is the beginning of our production week. Right. Um, so we're having a really quiet day today. We just sort of run through and then we get into some long days over the next couple as oh. we start to do all the technical elements and that kind of stuff. Oh, great. So you've done the pack in. Uh, yeah, I think that's finished. We haven't had a chance to look yet, actually. No, no. <laughs> I believe, yeah. So you're done at Circa Theatre. Is it the big one or the small uh, small theatre? Yeah, the main stage, the big the, one. The main stage for that one. Kate de Gould is well loved up here. Yeah, she is, eh? And being a Wellington writer, she always drops a lot of Wellington into her stuff. Yeah, not this, with this one, because I think this was based on um, sort of her own family sort of story with Catherine in Christchurch. Yeah. Who, her own mum was in a, a care facility in Christchurch, and um, a lot of the things that are in the book come from her experiences with her down there. Yes, actually, tell me about uh, what character you're playing. What character? Oh, I'll tell you a couple of characters, actually. Doris, who's like in, in her 80s and she's got some sort of form of dementia. Yes. So she's with a resident and I was to play um, one of the nurses, um, one of the caregivers, yeah. Some of us are, are doubling up with roles because that's the way there's the roles, really, because um, <laughs> it's really hard with co-op theatre to, to have as many people on stage as you'd like. Yeah. Sometimes you need to sort of compromise and play multiple roles, which is always really a good challenge for an actor. It so, must be, um, yeah, it must be interesting because in, in some senses your um, one character is, you, you're coming from one um, protagonist's point of view and then the other side you're almost the mirror of it or yeah, well, a compliment. Right. It's, it's a little opposite, yeah. So that is, that's really interesting play for an actor, that's, that's a good thing to do. So you get to look at it from uh, two sides of the coin, I guess, and you're thinking, how, you know, if I deliver in this particular way, this is what I need to react to as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Amy, what's your um, what's your role in it? Um, so I am playing the mother of Kerry, who's the nine year old girl, and also her nanny. <laughs> and so that's a nice little difference because the two are quite different types of people. Um, the mother sees, sort of sees Kerry as a bit of a project um, as an only child and likes to keep mm -hmm. her busy and do all those sorts of things. She's quite career driven as well. Whereas her nanny, who's called Nina, is um, much more, um, I don't know, I guess she's more sort of holistic and a bit more um, carefree in her approach to child rearing and <laughs> minding and stuff. So like, oh, it's quite nice, they're going to sort of opposite. And then I also play two old ladies at the old people's home 
yeah. So this is an interesting touch point with um, Kate's work. I've noticed her, her latest book um, uh, is also got that idea of children being allowed to go out and explore the world, and she's quite a big advocate for that, isn't she? Mm, yeah. Well, I think there is. I mean, I'm. I'm. Well, we are both mothers ourselves as well, both Michelle and I, and I think that there's definitely a push back at the moment in terms of not over molly coddling your children and you know I try my best not to do that with my girl she's only four so <laughs> she doesn't get too many opportunities to be out on her own but when we are out doing stuff I try to let her run free as much as possible and you know not over over helicopter parent as they call mm. it <laughs> So let's just wind back. The plot of the story is is that a little girl comes across her her grandparents and she she writes a book by, of letters and she creates these individual letters. How is that done in the show? What we use is um, quite a few, a lot of AV. Mm. So what Kerry, the daughter, the grandson, does is she will write a letter to her grandmother and she so thoughts that are in her head, you'll also see animated behind her on an AV screen. Right. So there's quite a few uh, marrying sort of technology with um, with the play, which is good. The, she gets the languages and the idea for making the alphabet book because her grandmother was a sort of a teacher, a school teacher of sorts, and loves language. So and that's one of the big things that Kate Goldie obviously mm. really is the play with language, and this gives going through an alphabet book gives um, a young child the ability to make up imaginary things and also you see the grand make up imaginary things from her kind of faded um, intellectual position now, her somewhat diminished intellectual position now. So is this uh, like sort of the similar sort of thing that say um, Terry Pratchett might have been going through where you've got this imaginary world that kind of blends with your dementia and things get a bit twisted round in your head? Yeah. Yeah, well, Gran thinks she's still teaching pupils while she's in the dementia unit, mm. or the, the dementia unit, or care facility. So she she thinks her granddaughter is a pupil, so she's gone back in time to when she was a teacher, except she can't find words, she's losing her words. Mm. So Harry is creating an alphabet book for her to remember her letters, to remember her words. We um, have actually had a lovely young girl um, do some of these drawings for us, and that's what's being animated. So they're not traditional uh -huh. in that sense. They're all um, sort of related, what well, they're all directly coming from the brain of a child. So she was given some subjects and letters and stuff to do, and she has been slowly working her way through them. And so we've actually got real kid drawings, which is pretty awesome, and then having those animated up as well. Um, yeah, so it's quite authentic looking, and, uh, and I think that it really adds that extra thing. I think it, because the story is really from Terry's perspective, it was important to make, make it quite childlike. Okay, so um, I guess the obvious question is what attracted you both to these roles? Um, I know you're a collective and you... Perhaps you, you come across and you do what you're given, but did you? Was there something that particularly took your fancy that you liked about these roles? Um, well, for me, uh, yes. <laughs> um, this is only my second show since I had my daughter, so for me, it needed to be something that was, um, yeah, that was interesting. That was going to grab me something that I felt had a heart and a soul. Um, because I had to arrange extra child care in order to um, go through the rehearsal process and then also obviously during the run I need lots of babysitters and um, so it needed to be something that I felt I was going to have a good time at as well and that would stretch me a little bit um, and yeah so so yeah that was it and also you know hoping to make a little bit of money hopefully people will come everybody come so yeah no that's that's me it's, and for me Michelle I just I uh, like the idea of the simplicity of, there's a very, you know, with people who have dementia or, or aspects of that, there's a very simple line. The world seems quite simple, even though it's really complex in, in, in other ways. Um, there's just a simplicity about being in that world, which I just wanted to explore. And um, and I really enjoyed that, because um, when you get to my age, in your 50s, you know people or you have relatives who, have, who are in care facilities or have dementia. And uh, you have that experience. It's useful to have that experience. It's useful to be able to use it and play with it on stage. That's me. Yeah, it was, a, it was interesting because I, I, I think I'm going to be attending as one of those people as well. Um, I have a relative who also has dementia and it's, a, it's been an interesting 
not an interesting journey, a rather heartbreaking journey actually. But it, it's mm, been a it yeah, it's it's been an interesting one to sort of sort of see somebody who um, in this particular case was really intense about numbers of things. He used to remember a lot of part numbers and things like that, and oh, it's yeah. just suddenly and you know and have that association with things. And I guess. That's something in the language that you're talking about um, here for this character is is she associates language with with the operational side of herself. Yes, very much identifies with again, her role in life previously and and everything that was important to her, which was literature and language and mm. um, and uh, it is really it is as you say it's very heartbreaking when you see those those things that you identify with that person become confused or so I guess as an actor that must um, sort of challenge you as well because everything you do is essentially based on your memory you know without your memory you have nothing to portray but um, that's why I think a lot of actors they say you know when you're out of work keep trying to memorise things or make plans and memorise things to keep that muscle working and especially as you get older there's always that in the back of your mind like you go into another production and you go oh you know, I hope that knuckles still work. Yeah, I hope I'm going to remember all my lines. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess is, is this is this production um, one that that does like like Shakespeare. You must deliver the specific lines, or is there a bit of uh, room for manoeuvre, so yeah, to speak? Yes, yeah, especially that, yes, because um, Jane Woodall, who's directing and she's also done the adaptation from the book, um, she's taken some lines directly from the book. So there were a few the other day that she's saying you have to get these ones right, right. <laughs> from the book. Yeah, because they're from the book. So we're trying to honour some of those original words as well. Yeah, that's true. So um, let me. I'll just get this clear. This is the ACB uh, with uh, Nora that's, Lee. Yeah. Uh, Nora Lee. Uh, that is actually the name of the book. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. Uh, and it's by Katie Goldie, and it's um, starting when? We open on Saturday night. We have a preview on Friday, and then we open on Saturday, the 27th of Feb, and we run through till the 26th of March. So the big question is, is your daughter coming? Ah, well, she might be a little bit too little. Um, it's, it's pitched at family, but really, we, I think we've kind of said probably eight years plus. Um, so she's probably a bit small, she might get bored. <laughs> <laughs> Try and walk out halfway through. Ah, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a good look. <laughs> no, not so great. But, um, yeah, I think that it's such, it's such a beautiful little touching story and there's going to be so much that it can offer. Like you were saying, as, as somebody who knows people who are beginning to suffer from dementia and also just, yeah, I think it's, I think older people would find it touching as well, you know? Um, yeah. And I think hopefully it would teach children a little bit about acceptance and love as well. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.